The video you're about to see is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be adding my RetroArch build to the Nintendo Switch. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so I've been trying to think of ways of how I can post this video without it getting taken down. And I couldn't find a less complicated way because, you know, I always give like subtle hints like this file has everything you need in order to get you set up. Right. But I wanted to show an end result where I actually show the build and things like that. And that kind of defeats the purpose of being really subtle. Right. So. I've come to the decision where I'm going to make this a part one of two videos where part one is where we set up the SD card and a little bit of the switch and where you get the link uh, to the build. And part two will be where I show what the build looks like and gameplay of the build and things like that. So that way I can do both. And hopefully it kind of is like a loophole of not getting taken down because of this website is very, very strict on, on these kind of things. That being said, also with the link, it's something that I can't really share as well. So what I was trying to do is another form of, of getting to y'all from this website, from YouTube, um, is sharing the link on my Twitter page. So instead of a link in the description to the pack to the build sorry it's going to be a link to my twitter page so once you click on that link you should be able to see my twitter profile and i i'm not sure if you have if you need to have a twitter already or if you don't if you don't then of course i'll have different other social medias that i can share with y'all except for discord but right now the plan is with twitter and if you go into my profile, you'll see on my pinned tweet, I have posted it here already. So with that, um, you don't have to follow me. I'm just trying to find a way of getting these files to you guys from YouTube. Of course, on my website, this link will be in the description. So yeah, with all that being said, I hope that it's not so much a problem for you guys and just trying to get this information out there as best as I can. But now that we have all this information, we can go ahead and try and continue. So with that, you're going to need your SD card open and ready for file transfer. And of course, you do need custom firmware already on your switch or your SD card in order for this to work. Now I am on custom firmware atmosphere, the latest version right now, which is 1.4.0. And my switch firmware is at 15.0.0. I don't think it matters on your custom firmware or your switch firmware, but I'm just letting you know that I'm on almost the latest versions of both. So that way you can know that it works on the latest one. So now that we have the SD card open, we can now download this one zip file for today. So if you look in the description, it's going to be a link to my Twitter profile and once you go to my Twitter, you'll see that under my pinned tweets, I have the link ready uh, for it to download. Once you download this link or this build, it is a really big file, so it might take a good while, depending on your computer and your internet. It might take a while because it is a compressed zip file of 26 gigabytes. So it might take a long time to download. But once you have it downloaded, you can have it dragged to the desktop like I have done already. Now, this is 26 gigabytes of a compressed zip of the build. The actual build size is actually 42 gigabytes. So you do need to make sure that your SD card is or has enough space for at least 42 gigabytes. And then some if you want to add to the build. But we'll talk about that later. So just make sure that you have more than 40 gigabytes. I'll be showing the actual size once we transfer to the SD card. And yeah, so let's continue. Now I'm going to be using my 7-zip or the 7-zip software to extract these files. 
and I always recommend it, but especially on this video, I highly recommend using 7-Zip because it's going to make it a lot easier when you have to reconnect all the split files. So this is what I'm talking about. With 7-Zip, I'm going to open the archive. And if you want 7-Zip to follow along with me exactly, there's going to be a link in the description for 7-Zip so that way you can download it and then follow along after. But once you open the archive in 7-Zip, you'll see that there is a folder. So that way you can have it on the Switch Home menu, which I'll be showing later on. And, and seven split zip files. Now the reason why I did this is because you're supposed to have your SD card in FAT32 format for all of your setup of everything that you use with the Switch and custom firmware. That being said, also with RetroArch, it is also recommended to have your SD card in FAT32 format. So if you're using XFAT, that's up to you, but it is recommended to be on FAT32 format. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I had to split these files into four gigabyte increments. So that way it can be able to be transferred onto a FAT32 format SD card because anything higher than four point 4.2 gigabytes is too large of a file. So that's why all these files here, if you see that the packet size, they're all about 4.2 ish files and that's all. So now that we explained that, we're gonna go ahead and highlight all these files. Even the forwarder and then extract them to the root of your SD card, which is the part of your SD card that is in the beginning where you're not inside any folders or files right here in the empty space. So just go ahead and extract them. And since it's a really big file, it will take a good while to extract. So just be prepared for that. And of course, I'm going to skip ahead to when it's done. So I'll see you when I get there. Okay, so after extraction, then there is the copying. So like my computer says about one hour. Should pick up in speed. Just that it's being really slow right now. Okay, so that transfer took uh, as long as it said, one hour. So once you extract all the zip files onto your SD card, now you have to do another extraction, but this time on the first one that has dot zero zero one. So once you have those files, including the forwarder, you're going to want to right click on this zip dot zero zero one and use seven zip to extract here. And then now you just wait for this extraction to your SD card. So I'll catch up to you when this is done also. Okay, I'm finally back. And if you notice I'm in a different shirt, it's because I've been trying to extract this one zip file for the past three days. So if you saw in the last segment, which probably just skips over where I say you need to look at this one zip file, the dot zero zero one, right click, use seven zip to extract here and just extract the files to your SD card. So that's what I did. But I don't know if my SD card is just since it's so small, it's a 64 gigabyte that it has a small transfer rate and also, it's really old. I bought this SD card when the Switch first came out. So that was a long time ago. I'm assuming that it finally gave out on me. And that sucks because I've used it for every single video until now. So it forced me to buy a bigger SD card. So now I'm using a 128 gigabyte SD card. So that way I can transfer the files. But something also came up that I guess was positive note was that when I reached max limit of my 64 gigs, after a while of trying to transfer, I got to 78% and it was still saying like six hours left. It said that I didn't have enough space. And it made me realize that when you are extracting this zip file, it's 21 gigabytes onto your SD card. And then when you extract this one zip file, to extract all and, and close all the split files, now you have 21 gigs plus 41 gigs. So I'm glad that happened because I am able to tell y'all that it happened to me 
And just to let y'all know that it is best to have a bigger SD card and make sure that you have at least 60 gigabytes of space in order for this to work. Now, unfortunately, this is because we're using FAT32 uh, file uh, format SD cards. And this is the only option that I could think of. If somebody has a better option, then maybe I can edit this. But since we have FAT32, only four gigabytes uh, of space can be transferred at a time. Um, I know some of y'all that use XFAT. Now that's a different story. It would have been a whole lot easier if that were the case. But FAT32 is the recommended format and it has a lot less corruption. So it's up, like I said, it's up to you. You want to use FAT32 format or XFAT. I'm assuming both will work, but since it's recommended FAT32, that's what I use. But neither here or there. I finally got the new SD card and it actually extracted all my files within one hour. So now I have you should have what's inside of this zip file. Well, I'm gonna open the archive and you should have just the regular files that you need in order to set you up with RetroArch. So you'll have the, the switch folder, you'll have the files that come with RetroArch and the build already in RetroArch and also the forwarder. So that's pretty much it. Now your SD card should already have it. And once you extract all the files, everything's good. You can now delete all of the zip files from your SD card, save yourself some 20 gigabytes of space. And I tell you, man, that was very frustrating. And didn't know that I was using the 64 gigabyte and the transfer rate is so slow. And I did not know that. But I'm gonna assume that most of y'all since y'all like to use the switch for lots of other things that y'all are using way more than uh, 250 gigabytes, I'm assuming. So this is the first time I use something higher on my switch and it feels nice. So I'm gonna invest in a 250 gig SD card now. But our SD card is done. Now what we can do is eject out of this SD card and go back into your custom firmware and then we'll set up the retro arc from there okay so back at the switch home menu we can go ahead and check first to see if we have retro arc in our switch and we can do that by going into the homebrew menu in album and here in the homebrew menu we can scroll through our apps and one of them should be the retro arc app and if you have it on yours, then your extraction should have been successful and should be ready to use. But before you go ahead and use it, I would like to mention that you cannot use RetroArch in Apple mode. So if you look above the icon of RetroArch directly above on the top right hand corner of the switch screen, you'll see red letters that says Apple mode. And in this homebrew menu, you're not using the full access RAM of the switch, so RetroArch wouldn't be able to run at all, or it'd be running really badly and crash a lot. So it is recommended to use it not in Apple mode. And you can do this in two different ways. So one of them is going to be through a title override where you hover over a title and then hold the R button on the right Joy-Con and enter a title while holding R like so and then you can release it and now if you look above the retroarch icon i don't have applet mode anymore so here you can use retroarch just fine but before we do that there's the other option where you can install a forwarder and that's what i added inside the the pack so when you extracted the files you'll see that let me see i can show you that it has this one file here and this would be your folder that way you can add it to your home menu and it'll be here so i'm saying these two different ways because i don't know if you're going to want to have retroarch on your home menu screen here and that but that'll be up to you so with installing the folder what we can do is go into any title installer with either mine i think in this pack i added my title installer the radicane love installer but you can use gold leaf tinfoil or a whichever or whichever one that you can use to install titles and 
that'll work. But I'm going to be using my title installer. And once I go into it, close out of this. Once I go into it, you're going to want to look for the first option here, install from SD card, and scroll all the way down to you see the retroarch.nsp. You can just going to go ahead and click A to select the file. You're going to want to install to the SD card, and it's going to most likely give you this error or message and just say, yes, I understand the risks. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just because it doesn't have the detection of those things. So it should work just fine. But once you install it, you can press home and now you should have RetroArch on your switch home menu. And that that will be it. Once you enter here, you'll have full access RAM and you should be able to use the RetroArch with the build or with whatever is on the build. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go into it. I'm not going to scroll through anything, so that way I won't show anything. But it should look like this. Um, looks kind of dark purple, but I think it's like maroon uh, on my monitor screen. But it will should look like this. Once If it looks like this color, then you should be okay. So the next video that I'm going to show is about gameplay. So that way I won't be able to show everything here or anything. I'm going to be showing gameplay of this build, but that's pretty much it guys. RetroArch is fine. It'd be up to you if you want to see the other video where I do some select games and, and, and run them and show well, how, how well they run or if they don't or anything like that. So, if you have any suggestions in the comments for any title that you want to see on the next video, I will go ahead and give a couple minutes into playing, giving some uh, runtime and letting you see how it runs before you, you want to decide and or, or things like that. So everything's working on my end, guys. Of course, I hope it works for y'all. I know it's a long video i know it's a long process to get these files but that's because like i said we're using fat32 format sd cards and this was the better option that i this was the only option that i had in order to get this working so i hope it works for you guys i hope it's not too inconvenient to go to the links um download the files and, and things like that normally i make my retro arc a small file just a small setup and allow you to to do the rest for yourselves but uh, like I said I don't think it's going to be updated anymore uh, that is beneficial to to the switch with RetroArch like uh, like with LACA they do a better uh, with upgrading stuff but I did notice that there was a huge bump and upgrade on the switch side on here and that's why i decided to do this here instead of lacca so there might be a lack of version it's just a lot <laughs> so with that i decided to do a build and i hope you all like it of course uh, if you want to add stuff to yourselves that'll probably be in the next video as well where i can show you or maybe a third video i don't know but let me know how you guys think about it if you try it uh, let me know if it works for you um any titles that you wanted to see and things like that. Um, if there is a title that y'all request and it's not in my build, I'm going to add it to my build just to show y'all. But in a, probably in a later video, I can probably show how to add, add uh, the title that you want and add it to this build. So I hope everything works for you guys. Let me know if it doesn't and I'll try and help you out. But of course, Thank you, everybody, for the support. I really appreciate y'all. And thank you very much. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.